girls, babies in your diapers. Welcome to the Tiberius Show with your host, Tiberius Hoy. That's me, Tiberius. Today we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a delivery video we're going to talk about, a book about the White House, and we have a totally awesome guest. The one, the only, the amazing Steve Dante. Steve is the owner of Dubstead and also known as the Tap Room in College Park. Well, thank you for the kind and uh, generous welcome. <laughs> Good to be here, Tiberius. You're welcome. And today we're going to start off with a video game of the week, and this is going to be a drive. And now it's time for the video game of the week. Today's video game is Delivery Totally Relatable Service. This is a game on the Epic platform. It was a free game this week, so I got my dad to let me download it. You find delivery requests, and you do the delivery, just like a FedEx or UPS driver. You enter the game, and you have to have up to three other of your friends join, and you can play together. So there are all these different vehicles around the map that you can use to do each delivery. There's a helicopter, a car, a forklift, a super big truck. A plane, a boat, a speedboat, a rocket ship, a jet ski, and even a pirate ship. I got to try lots of different ones, but the rocket ship is my favorite. Because you get to ride it around and it moves so fast. But when you crash it in the water, you reset to that last delivery. Now some deliveries you can do with your friends and it makes it faster because they can really help. I really enjoyed playing this game with my dad and messing up his deliveries. <laughs> It was driving him nuts. <laughs> I give delivery totally relatable service 10 out of 10 stars because it really is a lot of fun to be able to do anything you want in the game without any real rules. It sounds interesting. <laughs> oh, it is. Over 40 years, the House Central Florida has provided education, independent life skills, and job training to thousands of Central Floridians who live with blindness or any degree of vision loss. Whether it's picking out clothes in the morning or just moving around your community and serving Orange, Seminole, and Osceola counties, contact White House Central Florida at 407 898 2483 or visit them online at lighthousecfl.org. The Type View Show would like to thank one of our dedicated sponsors, Custom Designs Orlando. These guys are on Mills Avenue and do all sorts of stuff. Ranging from photo ID badges, engraved signs, custom braille ADA signs, vinyl littering, to trophies and awards. They can ship products all over the United States. You can reach them at 407-898-0373. And now it's time for the book of the week, The White House Christmas Mystery. This book is written by Carol Marsh. Let me read to the back of the book. In fact... Steve, would you like to do the honors? Sure, I'll do that. Okay, let's see here. We have... Are you ready? Mm-hmm. All right. "'Twas the night before Christmas when all through the White House. Not a creature was stirring. Oh, yes, it is. Not even a mouse. No. Much worse. The presidential stockings were hung. Don't say hung. By the chimney with care. Careful. That thing coming down the chimney isn't Santa. With hopes that the secret shh service soon would be there. Take a rollicking private Christmas treat tour through the White House and see if you can solve this mystery that ends in the Oval Office. It's mm, really cool. Sounds like it. Well, this is an Arab book. It's worth three whole points. That's a lot of points. Is that a lot of points? And it, it is rated for fifth grade and fifth a month. It's really cool. So this is a non-fiction book. So there was this grandma that wanted to write a book, and she wrote about a story of real-life kids that, well, got lost. So she started by going to the White House. So they got on a plane to go to the White House, and some of the family got, well, kind of lost. <laughs> well, it was, the, uh, it was Grant that got lost, and Christina, April, and Denise, Denise tried to find him. And then they all got to see lots of rooms, and they also ended up being able to see the President of the United States, and they got in trouble. See, this was before 9-11, when you could do private tours of the White House, and this must have been very, very scary to get lost in the White House. I would think so. 
Now I won't tell you everything, but this is a good book if you like history, facts, and traveling. I give the White House Christmas Mystery 10 out of 10 stars because I enjoyed seeing how they got out and the ending was cool and all. Are you going to tell me? No. You're not? No. All right, I'll read it then. What do you think? Uh, Well, I don't know. I I mean, you know, you've read it. You gave it 10 out of 10. You could save me some time and tell me how it ends. The Ted Beard Show would like to thank one of our awesome sponsors, StarChannelUS.com. These guys are very, very cool. They bring 21st century surface drainage solutions to reality. They can do corporate and government work. These are the guys that make roads and bridges safe in the rain. You can see all about them at SlotChannelUS.com. That website again is SlotChannelUS.com. See, Jamie Smith, Law.com. You can call him at 407-801-2667. Wait, you are not Chuck. My dad can help when people get hurt. He loves to help If you are ever injured at work or in a car accident, you should call my friend Chuck. You can call him at 407-801-2667. That website again is cwsmithwall.com. Offices, Orlando. Does it actually have that much W's? <laughs> and now it's time for an interview of an interesting person. Today's this is going to be so much fun. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing Steve Gunther. <laughs> Steve is the owner of the tap room at Dubstead and is an expert in the restaurant industry. Tiberius, could I get you to follow me around all day, every day, and just treat me <laughs> like this uh, with these kind of intros and <laughs> and that kind of credibility? Because I like that. Mm-hmm. Could you, or better yet, could you train my, my uh, fiancé, Debbie Getz? Could you train her how to talk like that about me? I think you just got to get their names right. <laughs> That's important, too. Yes. So first off, how are you enjoying being on the show? Well, I'm having a ball so far. How am I doing as a guest? Are you having fun with me here? Oh, yeah. All right, cool. Because it's always important to be a cool guest. Yeah. If you want to get invited back. Yeah. So to jump right in, you own the tap room at Dubstrad. Can you tell me more about what the tap room is? Well, sure. We are, um, we always say we are a um, restaurant on a golf course. We're not a golf course restaurant. That just happens to be our location. We're a family restaurant at night, and uh, during the day, we're kind of known as a business play, businessman's place to eat, and um, we serve fresh food. Uh, it, it's a full-scale menu. Okay. So, do you have to run the golf course as well? I do not. There's a very talented man. His name is Rodney Reef Snyder, and Rodney uh, works for the company that manages the golf course for the city, and he does a great job. Ah. So, what got you interested in the restaurant business? Well, interestingly enough, um, I was in a different career, and um, leadership changed at the company, and I decided that I wanted to do go into business for myself, doing something, and I became friends with a guy that owned a very successful local restaurant, and he asked me if I wanted to be his partner. Mm. So 23 years ago, I made the switch. Mm. What is the coolest thing that you have ever seen while running a restaurant? Wow, the coolest thing. You know what? There, there's a lot of cool things, but I would have to say at our restaurant, it's watching people come in and relive their memories mm-hmm. because our restaurant has been around since 1924 and we have banquet rooms where mm-hmm. weddings have occurred. And I think the coolest day I ever had Tiberius was, mm-hmm. uh, it was 15, 17 years ago. It was right after we opened and an elderly couple came in and they asked if they could go to see the fireplace in the other room. And I took them over. And they started facing each other, and they got very intimate, and I walked away, and when I came back to their table a half hour later, the man was in tears, and he said, we got married in front of that fireplace, I don't know, the number was like 62 years ago, and they were both in tears reliving that memory. So for me, the coolest part is the place that we have and its association and relationship to College Park, Winter Park in Orlando. Wow. So what is the best part about doing your job? The people. We get to be a part of people's lives through the events and just through the restaurant every day. I've met, I have, you know, 3,000 best friends because there's people that I know everything about. They know about me and we care about each other and it's cool. Mm -hmm. So what is the hardest part about working with food? When you're working with food, if you really want to serve excellent food, if you really want it to be excellent, it's got to be fresh. Mm. It's got to be fresh. It's got to be made to order. 
and not a lot of places do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So we do it, and it's, it's a great point of difference, but only if you get it right. And so the hardest part is making sure that everything's fresh and everything is perfect every time it comes out. Hmm. So, okay, your bio says that you have always been working. When did you start, and what got you in motivated to get a job? <laughs> Well, my first job was I had a paper route when I was 12, and I also started a car waxing business and a lawn cutting business when I was 11. So I would, um, I would go wax uh, the neighbor's cars uh, and make more money doing three cars a day than I would make in a, in a, in a week of, later on when I worked at a company. And then I would also cut yards for $5, and then I had my paper route. So those, those all started when I was 12, 11 to 13. And the reason they started is because my dad explained life to me. He said, we'll put the food on your plate and the shelter over your head, but if you want any spending money, you have to earn it yourself because that's how the world works. <laughs> so my dad helped me get into doing jobs as well. But being a reporter and running the show is my favorite. Which of the jobs have you done in the past is your favorite? Without question, the one I have today. You know why? Why? Because of the people. I... We now have such a talented management staff at Dubs Dread and Highland Manor that I don't have to run the restaurant anymore. I get to run the company. And I wasn't a very good restaurant operator, but, but Lauren and, and Stuart and Chris and Barbara and Ryan, they're really good at it. Damn. So it's fun running the company and, and, and working with them, watching them do well. I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. So when you were a kid, what did you want to do when you grew up? Did you always know that you were going to be in the restaurant business? I would have bet you a million dollars that I would never end up in the restaurant business. It's shocking that I did, but looking back, it's what I was meant to do. Wow. What I wanted to be growing up was a pilot, but it turned out I was colorblind and I couldn't get a commercial pilot's license. Okay, so your bio says that you worked for Coors Brewing Company and they make beer. What is the coolest part about working with beer? <laughs> Well, the coolest part about working for Coors was working for a man named Bill Coors, Joe Coors, and Pete Coors. They are, they are the most intelligent people I think I've ever met. Uh, Bill Coors in particular was brilliant. But the coolest thing about working for Coors was, and this was in the 80s and 90s, it was a different environment. When we were at meetings, when we had a 10 o'clock break, the beer would come out. When we had lunch, several beers. When we had a break at 3 o'clock, more beers. So... Uh, Bill Coors believed that uh, uh, you should have beer while you work and that moderation in all things was the way to live your life. So it was kind of cool. Hmm. So if you could go back 10 years and tell yourself something, what would it be? Enjoy the journey. Damn. Don't be in such a hurry to get there. Hmm. So what advice would you give my listeners if they wanted to go up and run their own restaurant? Well, if they want to run any business, um, they need to learn how to work hard now whether they're 12 13 18 you better learn how to work hard because if you want to own your own business you will work harder owning your own business and you will ever work working for someone else Dang. but it's rewarding so i encourage it but you better understand that it's not having the corner office and putting your feet up because your business won't last very long if that's how you treat it mm, wow. so for work so workaholics only <laughs> so, what is the best item that you have on your mug? Oh, boy. Okay, Tiberius. So, I'm going to let you tell me. We've won the best burger 18 of 19 years. Crab cakes are what we're known for. People say we have the best fried shrimp in the world. And they're, they're right. Um, our, our steaks are all hand-cut prime grade. And our seafood is all fresh. So, you tell me. What do you think is our best item? I have to say steak. Oh, you like prime steaks. Oh, yeah. Oh, all right. Well, steak we... is like my favorite food of all. Well, the next time you guys come in, tell your dad you want that prime grade ribeye. It'll set him back a pretty penny, and he'll hate me forever. And I always ask for medium rare. And when I get that medium rare, I know that this is going to be a good day. <laughs> That's exactly right. Medium rare is the way to eat it. Yep. I agree with you. Uh, so, what makes the tap room at Dub Stred the place where my listeners want should go to eat? Well, you know, everybody has their own preferences and what they want as a restaurant. We try to provide, um, we do provide outstanding service hmm. on the level of, um, uh, on the level of Hillstone. Hmm. But we do it in a more casual, friendlier nature. They are, without question, the best restaurant in America. 
and we try to match their service levels and their food quality levels, but be more of a place that you can feel is yours, where we recognize people, you know the managers and, and the servers, feel comfortable talking personally with you. Hmm. Wow. So if that's your style of place and if you like food made from scratch and it costs a couple dollars more and takes another five minutes to come out, if, if that's your place, that we're the place. If not, we're not. Mm-hmm. So how did Dub Shred get its name <laughs> and the tap room? Ah, the Dub Shred name was uh, given in 1924 by um, the gentleman who built it. And um, he, at the time, a dubber was a Scottish slang expression for a bad golfer. And if there was a group of them, they would call them dubs. Right? Mm. So dubs would dread this course because it was so difficult. Mm. So is dub like a noob at video games? <laughs> yeah, it would be. Um, uh, a noob is somebody that's like a rookie, right? That everybody's whipping yeah. up. Yes, yeah, so that's the same thing. A dub, a dubber in Scottish slang would would uh, would be like a noob today. Yes. <laughs> well. And by the way, in golf, somehow that name transmogrified into duffer. In America today, they're called duffers if they're not very good, but they were called dubbers by the Scots. <laughs> dubbers. Oh, okay. And the tap room name came from a place called Billy's Tap Room in Norman Beach. Mm-hmm. Now, my original partner, we're no, we, we're no longer partners. We separated 10 years ago. But my original partner and I were opening this place up. And he went over to see, he went over to Ormond Beach for the weekend. And he ran across, across a place called Billy's Tap Room. And it was built in 1925. And it was a legend in the restaurant business. And the inside of it looked exactly like the inside of Dove Street. So we decided to call it the Tap Room at Dub Street. Dang. And that's it. That's how it got its name. We stole it from Billy's Tap Room. They're no longer in business. Oh, yeah. So, uh, did you ever get famous people to visit your restaurant? And who's the coolest person to ever visit? Me. I go there every day. <laughs> no, we've had, uh, we've had uh, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. We've had uh, Nancy Pelosi. We've had... Various mayors and government and governors and uh, a lot of big business people that would be legends here locally. We're called the uh, Power Lunch Place, so we get a lot of locally famous people, but also some internationally famous. Wow. Sam, Sammy Duvall, the water skier, he's been there a bunch. So when you are not running the restaurant, what do you do for fun? Well, um, I have a lot of great friends, and we like to do a lot of stuff together. I have groups that I swim with at the YMCA. We do, we do laps. I have groups that I bike with. I have a bunch of friends I golf with. Um, um, I love to read. I read constantly. I read about a book every two weeks, generally. Okay, so what is your favorite book to read? Well, it, you know, there's not one. Um, I'm reading one right now called The Splendid and the Vile. It's about Winston Churchill in 1940. Hmm. He was the prime minister of England, and uh, and uh, he helped them. He, he got England through World War II uh, with the United States help. But I read history because history has all the answers. If you want to succeed in business, read what people have done in the past. If you want to have an intelligent political view, read what's worked in the past. So that I, I, I tend to read a lot of history, biography, um, things like that. Wow. Okay, okay. Now, can you tell me that one story? You know, remember, this is a kid's show. But the <laughs> one story, well, that you're not supposed to tell me about. Come on, oh, you can tell me. <laughs> All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you three stories, and you tell me which one is true. Okay. All right? The first one is, I failed at three businesses before Dove's Dread. The second one is, I crashed an airplane and walked away and lived to tell about it. And the third one is I've been married seven times. Which one's the true story? You've been married seven times. Really? Yes. You think I look like I've been married seven times? What? Where, where are there seven girls that would marry me? What do you me? think? You can't crash a plane, even though that you do have the thing. But also, you wouldn't fail three jobs, though. That's true. Okay, the true and the one story that, that, I, that I always get people on is I crashed an airplane and walked away from it. Well, it was a, it, I was coming in for a landing, and the tire blew, and it spun the plane off the runway, and it flipped over upside down into a ditch filled with water. And my friend and I just unbuckled ourselves and walked out and walked onto the wing and stepped onto the land. <laughs> All we had was a splash of water on us. 
He was on the news, everything. <laughs> That's funny. I know, right? Nobody ever believes it when I tell them. So do you have a website or Facebook for my listeners to tell them to follow you? Me personally? Mm-hmm. Me personally, I just have Facebook. Uh, I'm not on Instagram, and I don't have a website. Um, but it's just Steve Gunter on Facebook. You need to go in for Dubstrad. Oh, Dubstrad has lots. We have website. We have two websites for Dubstrad, Dubstrad Catering and the Tap Room at Dubstrad. Then we have one for Highland Manor. We have lots of Facebook pages for Mead Garden, Highland Manor, Dubstrad. We have a lot of those. But you said me. I'm not well, a- you own those places. Yeah, I do. I, I have a partner, by the way. Did, did you know I have a business partner? No. Her name is Barbara Teal. She's the best person I've ever met. <laughs> the reason we're successful is because of Barbara. Because while I'm off doing radio shows with you, she's back there doing the hard work. <laughs> so what is the one question that you think I forgot to ask you? You forgot to ask me if we're going to open more tap rooms. Well, are you going to open more tap rooms? Nope. <laughs> the tap room is special. We want it to stay that way. I don't want to own any other restaurants. But we are opening more catering places. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you, Steve, for being my special guest. Can, can you stick around for Mouth Corners? I'd love to. Midstate Fire has been providing top quality fire equipment services for three generations to the Central Florida area. Don't wait for an emergency to repair. Call Midstate Fire today at 407-246-8855. Get your fire extinguishers and emergency lighting for both your home and businesses by visiting www.midstatefire.com. That number again is 407-246-8855. The Tribeer Show would like to thank Boggy Creek Airboat Adventures for being one of our sponsors. I got to go on an airboat and saw a real gator. I even got to go to the gem mine and mine for some gems. We ate a steak dinner at the restaurant and even got some gator rights. If you want to have a blast with the entire family, I suggest you go to www.bcairboats.com right now to get your tickets today. The website again is bcairboats.com. Oak Ridge Gun Range is a family-oriented shooting range that has been in business for over 30 years. They specialize in basic firearm training and offer numerous services such as consignments, gun trades, gunsmithing, and concealed weapon classes. I even got my training for gun safety at Oak Ridge Gun Range. Great customer service and firearm safety is what they do best. So find out more at OakRidgeGunRange.com. Aw, Dad, my computer's slow again and I can't play my games. Call your computer solutions today and we will scan for viruses and clean that computer up remotely and make it fast again. Our phone number is 407-826-0810. Thanks, Dad. My computer's fast again. Now I can do my homework. Thanks for calling your computer solutions at 407-826-0810. Tiberius' favorite subject, it's Math Corners! And now it's time for Math Corners. Thank you so much, Steve, for helping me with Math Corners. Today, we're going to talk about intersections. Uh Uh-oh. You mean like where two cars come together? (laughs) Oh, math. Sorry. Math. Got it. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So this month, we have all been talking about lines. Well... I really like lines. When lines touch, they call that intersecting lines or an intersection. When lines don't touch and they're the same distance apart from each other, we call that parallel lines. I like parallel lines. They're really cool. So what is really cool is that there's a special intersection that looks like an intersection of roads. Well, they are called perpendicular. Correct. And because... So, So far, I'm keeping up. And that means the intersection of the lines makes four right angles. Right angles are 90 degrees, and perpendicular makes four right angles. Kind of like a squared. Still on board here. (laughs) All other intersecting lines create two acute angles, angles that are less than 90 degrees, and two obtuse angles. Obtuse angles are larger than 90 degrees. So Steve... Do you know all about parallel and intersecting lines? No. 
all the big word. I know about parallel and intersecting lines. I'm not sure I know all about them, but let's go with let's go with yes. <laughs> okay. So Steve, how do you use math with your restaurant business? Well, it's interesting. Um, you know, the whole universe comes down to math. Uh-huh. Everything is math. Uh-huh. And so in the restaurant business, we have to set goals um, that we run our business on. Our food cost has to come in at a certain percentage. The cost of our labor has to come in at a certain percentage. The cost of um, the cost of uh, liquor, beer, and wine has to come in at a certain percentage. And we set goals, mm-hmm. and we set our pricing based on that. And the managers have to make sure they hit those numbers. Mm-hmm. If we didn't do that, we'd just be running willy-nilly, and we'd be out of business soon. Nice. Well, thank you so much, Steve, for your help with Math Corners. You are most welcome. <laughs> As you know, we talk about the qualities of living by a heart of a lion, which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and ability. This week, we're going to talk about obedience. For me, I think obedience is being fully committed to doing what is pleasing to God. The qualities of obedience are compliance with a good attitude and respect for the laws. You know when someone is obedient, when they follow instructions willingly and freely. Well, normally, I talk about the things that I have seen or done, but as we are still dealing with the coronavirus and the effects it is on having on our lives, I don't get to leave the house or go anywhere. As kids, we all have been doing remote learning from home. This involves remoting in on time so that we are ready for when class starts. Then, and this is the hard part of a lot of us, is listening to our teachers. See, we are using Zoom for our class participation, and it is tempting to chat on the side using the Zoom chat, or getting distracted by what is around us in the room, and not focus on what the teacher is saying. It has been a big adjustment for me. See, I am having an attention problem. I want to thank Miss Kathy, who sits with me while I'm in class, for helping me stay on track and redirecting me to try and stay focused. I know I'm not the only one with this issue because a number of kids are asking the same question that the teacher just answered. I also want to thank my teachers for their hard work in keeping all of us on task and still learn during this time and our soon will be history. So guys, just hang in there. You're doing a great job. But we can all be better and more obedient when it comes to paying attention to the teacher and what is going on in class. So, Steve, did you see or use obedience at all this week? Obedience. Did I see or use obedience at all this week? I've definitely seen a lot of it. Uh, if, as people are struggling to uh, follow the rules put forth by the governor, the president, the Board of Health. I see people trying to follow all the rules and, and struggling with it. But I see them uh, uh, trying, and that's uh, that, that gives me heart. Mm-hmm. Of all the Heart of a Lion virtues, which is your favorite? Well... They do actually all go hand in hand. Would you agree? Mm-hmm. But to me, the cornerstone is integrity. Huh? Why? Well, you know, as an owner of a company, I can try to exert leadership to obtain obedience and nobility. But if I don't have integrity, my staff's not going to buy in. If they don't believe in me, if they don't believe what I say, if they don't believe I'm honest and forthright, they're not going to they're not going to follow. So leadership is difficult without integrity. Obedience is difficult without integrity. And likewise nobility. Mm-hmm. Well we should always try and be lying strong in everything we do. I agree. And that's our show folks. I want to thank the one, the only, the being on my show. It has been so much fun talking with you today and I have to visit the tap room again to enjoy more of that awesome food. Well, thank you, Tiberius. Um, I just want to make sure that Debbie gets understands that, uh, that intro because I expect that every time I walk in the room from now on, honey. And be sure to listen to us next week on the Tiberius Show. There was Tiberius Boy! The Tiberius Show is not filmed in front of a live studio audience. Executive producer, Joseph Boyd. Production editor, Pierre Laguerre. Green room manager, Danny Boyd. And your program host, Tiberius Boyd. The 
The Tiberius Show is copyright 2018.